I've had my Tesla Cybertruck for over a month now, and I just thought I'd share some of the good and the bad we faced. Now, if you haven't been following my channel, I currently have a Tesla Model Y as well as a Tesla Model X, and I love both cars. The software is amazing, and overall, these cars and Teslas are just amazing to drive. Back when we got our order to configure the Cybertruck, the biggest question in my mind was, what in the f am I gonna do with the truck? Help people move? And second, how do you say Tano? Tano, 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 cover. I still don't know. There was no reason for me ever to need a truck but it was a cyber truck it's the, the coolest looking weirdest looking car out there in the world today and i also didn't want to fork over twenty thousand dollars just for some badging and a couple accessories but i ended up putting in the order because i thought to myself this could technically be the car for me to start a new hobby like off-roading and again it's a cyber truck i'll be doing a detailed video on how to order a cyber truck and what i went through later but we took delivery of our tesla cyber truck on february 29th since then, I've driven it every day and I had a few thoughts. Immediately, people start staring and they come up to you. And I'm sure you guys seen all the reaction videos, but people want to take photos with the truck, see what it's like. One lady even hugged my truck. It's pretty crazy. If you guys want people staring at you and you guys want to feel a little special, then this will probably be the car for you. But the beauty is it definitely brings smiles to people's faces and honestly, it makes their day. So right away, five questions everyone keeps asking me. Number one, how's the range on the Cybertruck? Truck. Number two, how's the ride and handling and how does it drive? Number three, does it fit in the garage? Number four, I heard the Cybertruck is rusting. And number five, what issues have I had so far? And lastly, number six, what car am I selling? So let's talk about the biggest question, range. On Tesla's website, it claims the long range can get 340 miles on a single charge. There aren't any specifics like with their other Teslas when you build those Teslas, like if you switch things like the wheel configuration. So we are assuming this is with their road tires. We just went on a road trip to Northern California. So I have all the charging details and everything in that video. And people who have already been on road trips with the Cybertruck already kind of scared me thinking that number one the charge rate sucks and it takes much longer to charge and number two the miles and the range is horrible however i was shocked to know that the range exceeded the estimate and charging speeds went above 250 kilowatts sometimes even 256 kilowatts also as far as time goes i had no problems charging for 15 minutes or less. So with the Cybertruck at 100%, I was getting 318 miles. With the 35 inch tires, I was able to drive nonstop for 182 miles and I still had 72 miles left. And my average watts was 507 per mile. So to the uninitiated, it seems horrible. But again, if you've ever driven a Tesla, you first keep it at percentage, not miles. And second, you always wanna keep your eye on the energy gap on the Tesla screen. Not only that, it also matters on how many watts your car consumes and that affects your miles as well. Since we got our Tesla Model Y, I've never been able to drive three hours in my Tesla before. I'd always have to stop before to charge no matter what. And again, just remember, these are not gonna be the normal tires for most people. This is only the Foundation Series Special Edition with the 35-inch all-terrain tires. For reference, the Rivian R1T has 20-inch all-terrain tires, or you can get their road tires, which I think are the Pirellis. This alone makes a huge difference on range. So if you're considering getting a Cybertruck and you're using it mostly for road trips, you want to be switching tires or you want to get the road tires stacked. The battery pack in the Cybertruck is so much larger than, say, the Tesla Model Y. But the crazy thing is it doesn't even take that much longer to charge. For instance, the Model Y has an 82 kilowatt hour battery pack. However, the Cybertruck has a 122 kilowatt hour battery pack, which is insanely big. And if you had the 50 kilowatt range extender, that's you're done. No issues driving far. And a crazy thing is I wasn't even at that low state of charge. However, at some superchargers, I was getting speeds above 250 kilowatts. And that's crazy in itself because the most I've gotten in my Tesla Model Y was around 250 kilowatts for a few minutes, but that would be at a super low state of charge. So number two, ride and handling. Now this one is huge. When I drove the Rivian R1T, it drove like a truck. It was also on all terrain tires, but I felt like I was floating. Handling wasn't the best, but again, I expected this because it's a truck. The Cybertruck, on the other hand, is a completely different animal. You got two things that makes the Cybertruck so unique. You got the steer by wire as well as the independent rear steering, and that alone is a game changer for Tesla. If you didn't know, steer by wire just allows you to move the wheels much easier 
with the steering wheel. So at low speeds, I can slightly move the steering wheel to make adjustments while parking or turning. And at higher speeds, it's fluid and it knows and adjusts the steering easily. So essentially, even with U-turns, you don't even need to turn the steering wheel that much. With that and the independent rear steering, where the rear wheels can actually move to assist the truck to turn is amazing. I can easily handle U-turns without any issues. I feel like I'm driving a sports car with the way it handles through curves and turns, giving some insane handling. Also, the tires are ginormous, and I thought I would be getting a ton of vibrations and a free vibration massage when I'm driving because I'd assume it'd be super bumpy. But this baby is so smooth, especially on local roads. However, I did notice at freeway speeds, I did begin to notice more vibrations coming from the steering wheel compared to my other Teslas like the Model X. However, it's not uncomfortable, and it's also not a weird tire balance or alignment issue. I think it's just due to the huge treads on the tires. Also, it's insane. 50 PSI recommended, and it can go to 65 PSI? That's insane. Now, when driving the truck, you'd assume it's this giant fridge, which can't stay in the center lane, and it's going to jut out on the sides. However, the side repeater cameras do an amazing job, and it helps you see where the fenders are and the tires are. And with the steer by a wire, it allows you to make micro adjustments while you're driving. I will say the one con with the Cybertruck interior is those giant beefy A pillars. They're so big, but luckily you have a large small window. However, with certain turns, it does get in the way and sometimes I can't see the curb or not. So that is an issue. And as far as power goes, this thing pulls. Zero to 60 in 4.1 seconds. I mean, who needs to go that fast in a truck? It reminds me of a Model X long range. It's not plat status, but it's honestly good enough. Also, the regenerative braking feels amazing. It's very similar to all Tesla models, very strong and works good. Now, another thing I thought would be super difficult is parking. Good old parking. I mean, it's intense when you first try it. I'll tell you that much. So I feel like you guys should practice a little bit. One of the biggest reasons is the fact that the Cybertruck does not have any vision sensors yet. It will be available later, but this sucks so bad, especially for a huge truck. There aren't any indicators that show you how close you are to something or any notifications or anything. So you have to get to know your truck real good and know the sizes and the limits. But now at least the Cybertruck does have a front camera. I found that when parking into a spot, the steer by wire, I barely have to turn the wheel to do these tight turns. And second, when I do bring up the front camera, I can go all the way up till I'm at the border of the front camera with a few inches to spare. So that means I know I can go further. And when you reverse into a spot too, barely turning the steering wheel, you'll see the white line indicators turn so much. You don't have a lot of wiggle room in the Cybertruck. If you park in a normal spot, you need to go all the way in, otherwise you end up sticking out. This also applies when you reverse in. However, once you're in the spot, you have plenty of room on both sides. Just be careful if you park next to someone. And this is where I miss my Falcon Wing doors in the Model X. Can you imagine in the future if Tesla makes a Model X with stainless steel doors with the Falcon Wing doors? That would be insane. Now, I'm not worried about the truck getting any door dings. I'm more worried about the damage I'm gonna create for the other car. These doors are so heavy, it's legit made out of metal. So if you accidentally swing that bad boy into another car, I can seriously see some damage. So just be careful. So far, parking into a spot, I usually have to do it twice still to line it up perfectly. Because again, you have no wiggle room. So you gotta park like a Marine, son. Number three is probably the question I get asked all the time. Yes, it fits in a normal size garage. Even with my Model X in the garage, it also fits. The only issue is it's much longer. So when it is in the garage, you can't expect to get anything on the other side of the car. So you have to kind of think of that where you're parking it. However, if you have a smaller size garage or you have things jutting out of the garage, the Cybertruck will definitely not fit. Now, let's talk about the good old Cybertruck rusting phenomena. This one is huge. The stainless steel sits outside. It gathers all sorts of elemental issues like rust, However, this is just contaminants on top of the stainless steel. And with proper prep, like using something like Iron X and using cutting pads, it removes everything instantly. And this leads me to my very next disappointing point. The Cybertruck, as durable as it is, it scratches so easy, like insanely easy. When we first got our Cybertruck, it had this uniform finish of stainless steel. There aren't any grains on this, so it's just like a stainless steel panel. Now, I'm still trying to figure all this out because we still need a way to remove all the contaminants and stuck on grime, but not scratch the Cybertruck. So at first, I used my Scrub Daddy sponge and Barkeeper's Friend soft cleanser to pretty much clay bar the truck. Man, this left micro swirls 
everywhere and it looked horrible in the sun. And again, I was super disappointed because I thought to myself, this is supposed to be the most super durable and scratch resistant car. And the whole point of getting a Cybertruck is so you can go off-roading and you don't have to worry about things like those pinstripes where you hit some rocks or branches, but it scratches so easily. I was able to restore it, however, using some sanding discs, but it's still a work in progress as even the best detailers are still learning about the stainless steel in the Cybertruck. And that's the annoying part. You're getting like the super cool stainless steel Cybertruck, but everyone is paying an additional $6,000, $6,500, maybe even more to get it wrapped because it avoids fingerprints and it scratches so easily. I mean, they might as well have painted it. Now, number five, let's talk about the issues I have with the Cybertruck. And the first one, of course, is safety. And this has been happening to a ton of people, even the Tesla detailing team. The panels can be super sharp in some areas. It's so sharp, it literally creates a gash in your finger. It's like you cut yourself with a knife. I found some of the edges of the doors were extremely sharp. It's as if the machine that cuts these messed up a little bit. So I had to do a test. Will it chop off someone's finger if you close the door? Let's see, here we go. <laughs> clean off so the panel is like not that sharp here but there's certain areas that are very sharp and then they can easily cut into the carrot like look at that now we got something a little girthier like pretty thick cucumber let's go and see how easy it, it chops off the cucumber here we go right here <gasps> these doors are not child friendly man like it is insanely sharp Holy. Oh, it sliced it clean off. So we've seen the videos and also the Tesla engineers did say they're working on making the frunk even better and more sensitive. However, when you close the frunk and let's say you have your finger like right here and you didn't realize it. Oh. <laughs> Remember, a carrot is not gonna be as strong as your finger. Here we go. There we go. See, so it does stop on this side over here. Yeah, if it feels more resistance, it'll stop. So let's just stay right here. Oh, God, it's scary. It's scary for sure. But if you had one finger, like right in this spot, And of course, we all know how dangerous the frunk is at certain angles, but it does have safety measures to prevent it from slamming closed, but only in certain areas. Another issue I had was the heat in my Cybertruck died suddenly during our road trip. It's weird. I don't know how it happened. I hear these loud noises as if the heat pump is dying or something, and then the heater just doesn't work. The Cybertruck does have a front camera to help you see better, and that's great and everything. However, like most other car manufacturers, I wish there was a setting that automatically turned on the front camera at low speeds. This would help a lot with parking and just being able to see better when the Cybertruck is at low speeds. And again, speaking of parking, the vision system is just horrible. There is none. So I don't know if I'm too close to something. It could be very difficult to maneuver the truck in tight spaces. You have to rely on the cameras and you have to know exactly where the truck is. The front camera also has this really cool nozzle spray to help clear any debris, and that's awesome. However, why didn't they put that in the rear camera? The rear camera doesn't have any sort of cleaning spray, it's just attached to the bumper. And the issue I have with this is, because the rear view mirror is just so useless, why couldn't have they made that a digital rear view mirror so you can still see out the back no problem. With most car manufacturers, they have two rear cameras. They have the rear camera when you're backing up. And if you have a digital rear view mirror, they have one higher up. And it makes sense, right? And because it's higher up, it doesn't get any dirt or grime on there so you can still see fine. But with the Cybertruck, it uses that same rear view camera. And that can be completely useless if it's raining or if you're going off-roading or if it's dirty. Now let's talk about the windshield wiper blade. It's super cool, but it makes no sense. Let's be real. There's a reason why a wiper is supposed to be in the down position and it goes up because it pushes the water away from the windshield. It does work really well, however, but the problem is when it's in that down position, all the water accumulates at the bottom over here. So then when it goes up and you're driving at highway speeds, the water just kind of comes up again. So you're constantly having to use the windshield wiper. When you are driving and you use the windshield wiper, it does stay at the bottom for a few minutes so that the water can kind of 
pull away, but it still happens where it goes back up and there's still water that comes up. Also, I noticed that the windshield wiper fluid is just horrible. The windshield wiper fluid comes out of the blade itself, but I found it didn't do a great job at all at helping me clean the windshield. And it also left a ton of bad streaks in the middle. I feel like there needs to be more windshield wiper fluid or it just has to be stronger. Now the headlights on the Cybertruck are honestly bright enough for me. I am a stickler with headlights. However, I think the headlights work great and the high beams do an even better job. And if you compare that to the Reflector Model X, it's like night and day. However, if you compare it to the Matrix headlights, it's similar, if not slightly worse. Now, the Cybertruck is such a cool looking, unique car, and the angle of the rear truck is super cool. However, this makes anything in the back of the truck bed inaccessible at all, unless you climb into the truck. Like with the Rivian, you have a gear tunnel where you can use that as a step to access the truck bed easier. However, the Cybertruck doesn't have any sort of step where you can step onto to access that area of the truck bed. Maybe an aftermarket company will develop one, who knows. I also found there's no 12 volt cigarette outlet anywhere in the Cybertruck. And I actually use this all the time when I have, let's say a portable fridge so I can connect it directly. And if you have sentry mode on, it'll stay on 24 seven. Also, if you have maybe like a radar detector that uses a 12 volt power, you can't use that as well. So now it's just all 120 volt outlets, which is cool, but you're maxed out for only 12 hours at a time. And this was an issue when we were on a road trip and the car was just parked somewhere because I had to remember to turn off the outlets and turn it back on again because it automatically turns off after 12 hours. They do make it super easy to turn it on or off in the app. It even shows you a countdown of how much time is left, but it would be still nice to have that option. Now, while the frunk is automatic, I have to say it's, it's a pretty small frunk. I've never thought I'd say that about a Tesla. You have to strategically place your grocery bags upright in certain areas. Otherwise, it won't even close. Also, because the body is like full stainless steel, I'm assuming no sort of RFID signal can penetrate it. So there's no home link you could purchase to add on as an installation later. And that's something I love in my Model Y and my Model X. You can use the MyQ setting, but you have to pay a subscription for it, which is horrible. Also, it only works if you have an internet connection. Now I'm still creating content, but I wanted to see how this bad boy handles off-road. One issue I already know is the lack of the locking of the rear differential. And I heard it may come in a software update, which is great, but they should have made that available right away as it's very important when you're going off-roading. Now the sound system in the Cybertruck is legit. It has dual subs underneath the rear seats. However, there's so much vibration that comes from the carpet liner where the subs are. So I ended up smashing some towels in there just to create some space and that has fixed the issue. And I know that in the past, a few Model Ys, S and Xs, had an issue at certain angles when you're looking at the windshield, it gives off this weird distortion. It makes things look sort of wavy. And I know the glass on the side of my truck is just purely straight. So there must be some sort of film in between the glass that isn't set properly, which gives off that wavy look. Overall, all these problems are mostly software based. And if you get a Tesla, you know all these problems most likely will be resolved in the future. For instance, one thing is the rear view mirror image quality isn't that good and it's so small. You can move it in one of two places and the right side is slightly larger. However, the second you use your turn signal, it replaces it with the side repeater camera. However, for me being a defensive driver, I still like seeing my rear view mirror just in case someone is coming in hot behind me, I can get the hell out of the way. Weirdly, there's also no cabin overheat protection. Nothing in the test menu or in the app, and there's no lock confirmation horn sound. I can use the custom lock sound, but all the other Teslas have that gentle horn sound when you lock it, and I'd like to have that in my Cybertruck. Just remember, I know that I'm getting an early edition model. There's gonna be a ton of issues, bugs, and I just have to deal with it. I'm just happy to have the Cybertruck that early. This is why a lot of my friends who can design their foundation series, they're just waiting it out for a little longer until they get all the kinks out. Now, number six, I plan on selling none of my cars for now. The Model Y, it's running at 65,000 miles. Everyday Jan loves the car. It blends in, it has power, good space, and overall, it's a great car. However, in two years or so, we may end up selling the Y to get maybe the Rivian R2, which seems like a nice change. And depending on how much I love the truck and I love off-roading, I may end up selling it later in the future. But the goal is to still keep the X, it's just a great car, but I'm loving the Cybertruck more and more and liking the X less and less, surprisingly. But overall, I'm just super happy with the truck. It makes me smile every day and I just love it. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.